Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to our Winterberry project. As you'll see, it's a little white out here. We had a bunch of snow last night and today. And I actually shot this video earlier in the week uh, once already. But uh, when I got it home and looked at it on the computer, it looked terrible. Uh -huh. the lighting was awful. And I'm out here later today than I had planned, so the lighting might still be terrible. But we've got a couple updates for you. Uh, a reasonably clean house, uh, but we've got fireplaces are in. We got a little bit more electrical done, a little bit more plumbing done, and still same HVAC's been done. So it'll be a short video with just a quick update. So we're inside the great room here, and you'll see we've got our pass-through fireplaces in. Passes through from the great room into the hearth room, which I don't know why. Uh, I'm just going to call it the freaking kitchen because you know this we're going to have space here for two old chairs and like a little table and architect referred to it as you know a hearth room but we're just going to call it all one big kitchen in here but we've got that in one thing I don't like about it is the color of the sides very brown uh, there's going to be nothing in the house that matches this so we're going to see if we can get some replacements that are either white black or gray because that's pretty much going to be the color theme of the home and we've got i'll take a i'll take a shoot downstairs here in a second but we've got the downstairs fireplaces in as well uh, but you'll see we've got electrical run i know we had some electrical run on the the last video uh for like the outlets and the switches and stuff but what the electrician's got a ton of in and he is told me these are absolute pita to put in are uh, the can lights for us and we're doing a different style in this house that we haven't used in the past and they have i'm going to see if there's one in the box here that i can show you let's open bear with me here as we go we go digging through boxes but normally we use a wafer that'll just install on a normal junction box well, these have the brackets you're probably used to seeing that go between uh, joists to mount. But what they also have, you see that little box next to uh, the bracket that holds the light. That is a little transformer. And so the electrician has to run his wires into that box, make his terminations. And then when we go to install the actual lights, they will plug into a low voltage whip that's up there. So a little bit more of an install process than normal. Normally with what we use, we would just have a little J box with a whip in it. it. Takes 30 seconds to install. And then you just terminate your wires from the actual light to it and you're done. So these are a little bit more complex. And most of the spec houses we see in our area have, you're lucky to see 20, 30 can lights in them. I think we have 135 can lights in this house. So we've got a mixture of like, these are six inch now we're in the, you know, we're inside of the master bedroom here. So we did six inch lights in here. They have those same little junction boxes uh, for that low voltage transformer there for the lights. And in our, in our great room, as we've told you the ceiling detail, uh, we showed a picture in the last one and actually <laughs> It's sitting in a crate outside. And the company, we told them, please drop it off in the driveway. It's just a stone driveway right now, no big deal. We got a call from our electrician that was out here on the day they delivered it. They put it in the middle of the street, like not like off the curb in the driveway, the actual middle of the street, an eight foot by four foot by two foot tall crate. So we had to bring a couple guys over here and get it drug into the driveway. But, once that goes up, that's when we'll put the can lights in up here. And there's gonna be a mixture of six inch and four inch inside of that, that detail. And then kind of in some of our smaller areas, um, like there were six inch inside of here, or six inch everywhere in the, in the bathroom and the closet. But when you get into like the hallway here, we're doing all four inch in here and we're doing four inch inside of the kitchen because we put a lot more of them in there. I like the look of the smaller fixtures than the big ones. So kind of the areas that are going to be more of a focal point in the house. I wanted to get those smaller fixtures. And so, yeah, so like that's, 
That's a four. Looks tiny. We got fours through here. You know, we carried fours all through this area. Four inch all through here. Four inch down through the hall. And then going towards the garage, we carried four inch in here. And then we went back to six inch inside of like the laundry room. So on plumbing, there's only a couple things left. And that is the tub for the master bathroom and the shower for the basement bathroom. We thought we ordered those like three weeks ago. And it turns out the supply house never placed the order. They actually forgot to order them. And we found out like Thursday last week. So we lost, I think it's ended up being two and a half weeks. We'll lose waiting for those. So we're just gonna push forward. We're not gonna wait for those to come in uh, to get insulation started because the tub in the master doesn't, it's not on insulated wall, so that's not a problem. The only one that's the problem is, is dark in here, uh, is that tub there. We have to insulate the wall behind it. So we'll just, we'll insulate it and we'll just move along. And if the tubs don't come in before drywall, we'll just have them drywall and stop a foot above where the tub's supposed to be. And we'll pick it up from there. Once, once the tubs get installed, we'll finish the drywall. Well, it won't actually be drywall, it'll be like Dura Rock. Uh, down to the tub flange and we have our linear fireplace here so this turned into a an interesting project we had ordered a 60 inch wide linear fireplace we had gotten the paperwork from the supplier for it and we had the you know the framers framed out the whole wall everything framed out the opening good to go opening was on the money for what the paperwork showed well, our fireplace guys call us. They come out to look at the job. So, yeah, we can get them done this week. Uh, they go to start installing them. They open up that unit. And that unit is 66 inches wide. So, we're almost certain they sent us the wrong fireplace. But in the interest of time, and it's like 12 weeks to get another one, we said, screw it. We said, can you guys just reframe the wall for us? absolutely no wrong on the framers whatsoever. They built it exactly how it was supposed to be, like on the money. But when you get something that's the wrong part, you either get to wait a long time to get a new one these days, or you say, forget it and find a workaround. So our, luckily our fireplace install guys also do like home renovations and siding and stuff. So they're, and they used to own a framing company. So they said, yeah, we'll take care of it. We'll reframe the opening. We'll bump out the wall and we'll make everything you know ready to install. So they took care of all that for us, which was fantastic because it, that way we didn't have to take a big time delay on it. And the one thing I told them, I said, we just gotta make sure that the center line of the fireplace stays center line with the ceiling detail. I'm kind of a, I'm kind of a stickler on things lining up and being symmetrical when and where possible. And that's one of those things. When you've got a focal wall with a detail above it, if you're off by even an inch, you're gonna see it. You're gonna see it clear as day. Um, some people say, oh, you'll never see an inch. That is just not true. Especially if there's things that are all gonna be in line from floor to the ceiling. So let us know in the comments below. Would you have just went ahead and reframed the wall and, and put the different fireplace in? Or would you have waited the 12 weeks to exchange the fireplace out and get the correct one? Curious what other people's uh, thought process would have been on that. So that's pretty much all we've got for an update on this one today. And I fear this next week, uh, we probably really won't have much of an update because I mean they got like a little bit of electrical to do and the next time we'll have something worth showing you guys is when we get the ceiling done in here and it's our our, our finished carpenters are the ones who are going to take care of that for us and if you guys follow the channel you know we have a customer pre-sold being built right now which is our Marina Terrace project go check that out if you haven't but they're finishing up all the little odds and ends over there. So 
we can't steal them to come and put the ceiling detail in until they finish. So hopefully in the next couple days they'll finish. I can kidnap them, bring them over here, get that knocked out. And we have reached out to our, uh, our insulation company to see when they can come out and start fire caulk for us. So as always, we appreciate you guys coming out on the job site tour with us. It's a cold one today. As always, smash that thumbs up button for us. If you're enjoying the series of building a home from start to finish, subscribe to the channel. Uh, we try and get two videos up a week. I know I missed Winterberry last week, but that was thanks to dark footage. Shame on me. And actually just ordered a new camera today. I'm going to be curious to shoot with that instead of the GoPro I've always been shooting with. So we will see you guys on the next update.